Hey everyone and welcome back to Edgier Than Thou. Uh, you may notice that we're in a bit of a different spot today and that's because I think we're going to be taking a bit of a different direction for this video. Taking a break from politics, I just wanted to do my best to get the answer to a question that I've had for a very long time. And spoiler alert, we're not really going to get an answer, but we're going to get a bit closer and I think that's very interesting. See, the question that I've had, kind of the, the confusion that I have felt for my entire life is why are the different kinds of alcohols so variant in their toxicity? And to illustrate, I've got my little molecular modeling kit here to, to hopefully clarify things a bit. So we got water, right? Water's delicious. You should be drinking lots of it. If you haven't drank much water today, this is your reminder to go and do that. Okay, but we switch out one of the hydrogens in water for this and call that a methyl group and suddenly this is incredibly toxic. This shit'll kill ya. Okay, cool. Let's pop out one of those hydrogens and let's add another methyl group. This is now what we call ethanol. And for the most part, it's good shit. You can drink as much as you want. You can drink in moderation. But what's especially interesting to me then is if we, I'm just gonna get, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get our hydrogens back. If we, add another methyl group, specifically on this carbon, I'm not even gonna deal with n-propanol here, all right? We get isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, incredibly common, also quite toxic. So what is it about one carbon that's incredibly toxic, two that's not all that toxic, and three that becomes toxic again? In fact, I believe I've even charted their toxicities. Yes. As you can see, the number of carbon atoms in an alcohol has a counterintuitive impact on its overall danger level. From the good folks here at PragerU, please do not ask us where we got this data. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, there is going to be quite a bit of educated guessing, and I'm going to be leaving a lot out. I do have an undergrad degree in chemistry, but I don't have a background in biochem, so take all of this with a grain of salt, and more take it as something that's worth exploring a bit further into, kind of just like a jumping off point, because this stuff is so complicated and it's so cool. And I don't know, I don't want like this video to be the end of your exploration into it if my presentation of this question now makes you kind of curious about it. Another disclaimer, my whiteboard is quite reflective. That means when I pull it up, you're gonna see the little ring light there and you're just gonna have to deal with that. And then I guess a third disclaimer, we'll just tack on here. If you hear country music playing in the background, that's the downstairs neighbors. They play it literally every night. It's 2 a.m. right now. How I managed to get to sleep with the sleep issues that I already have is a mystery unto itself. But okay, let's get into it. One thing that you may have already caught on to is that alcohols in and of themselves are not the only thing that alcohol is putting into your body. And when I say that, I'm not talking about all of the different additives that you're going to find in any particular kind of booze that you're drinking. What I mean is alcohols get metabolized. So I've kind of very basically drawn that out here. Yeah, again, ring light, get over it. And as you can see, methanol gets metabolized to formic acid. Ethanol gets metabolized to acetic acid and isopropanol becomes this fun little thing that we're going to get into in a bit here. For both methanol and ethanol, there is an additional aldehyde intermediate that becomes relevant as we get to it. In the case of methanol, that's formaldehyde, and in the case of ethanol, that's acetal acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde? I guess I've never heard it pronounced out loud. We'll get into that in a moment here. So one of the things that I very quickly realized when I was doing research for this video is that methanol and ethanol do very, very similar things to your body. It's just that ethanol does it worse or less effectively. But there's one thing it does better and we'll get into that and it's kind of the reason why ethanol is so fun in the first place. So methanol gets metabolized in your liver by alcohol dehydrogenase to formaldehyde, which then through a similar process by um, aldehyde dehydrogenase, I think that's what it's called, fuck if I'm looking it up, to formic acid. So both of these are very, very dangerous. Um, but let's talk about formic acid first, because that's kind of the primary issue here. Formic acid happens to be very good at bonding to active sites on cytochrome C oxidase in your mitochondria, which it's actually probably something you're a bit more familiar with than you might remember. The long and short of it is, 
by bonding to this particular enzyme, it interrupts the electron transport chain. Essentially, it stops you from processing the oxygen that you're breathing in and switches you over to the anaerobic process. Similarly, compounds like cyanide, which I, don't, I added this just to like symbolize the fact that it's an ion. I don't really know if that's how you're supposed to symbolize those in these little molecular modeling kits. Cyanide does the same thing. Carbon monoxide also does that. One thing you may notice, however, is that formic acid is quite a bit bigger than cyanide and also carbon monoxide, which is, I think, part of the reason why it's less effective as a binder, why it's less dangerous than cyanide or carbon monoxide, because it just, it doesn't fit into those active sites quite as well. So, okay, switches you over to anaerobic cellular respiration. Why is that such a big deal? Well, as far as I can tell, the main reason for that, the main reason that that's a problem is because it leads to acidosis. Essentially, fermentation produces more and more lactic acid, which in turn is going to acidify your blood, and that can lead to a whole host of issues all over your body. Acid in your blood turns out to be generally a bad thing. So yeah, that's the primary mechanism by which it's going to kill you. It's gonna acidify your blood, cause a whole host of different kinds of organ damage, you're gonna be throwing up, it's, it's not gonna be a very fun time. That's all well and good, um, but one of the things that you might be thinking about is the fact that there's one very particular symptom that methanol is really heavily associated with. And of course that's eye damage, blindness, and the primary culprit in that process, as far as I can tell, is formaldehyde, an intermediate in the um, oxidation of methanol. I don't know if I'm technically using the term intermediate correctly there. I don't know exactly what the term is for those like in-between products in specifically biochemical reactions. Uh, like I said, don't have a biochem background, but at the very least it's, it's an intermediate in the sense that it's in between two processes here. So formaldehyde specifically, and I, I, I can't really explain why I'm not, this part has, has kind of evaded me, likes to bond to proteins in the optic nerve, which just specifically causes interruptions in the optic nerve's functions, which ultimately can cause permanent vision damage and eventually blindness. I know that's not a super satisfying answer, but at the very least I figured I would mention it. One kind of interesting note is that the formation of formaldehyde as an intermediate is actually one of the kind of basis's bases for um, fear-mongering about artificial sweeteners like aspartame. When it's being metabolized in your body, you produce some methanol, which creates some formaldehyde and some formic acid and all that business. But it's important to note that one, you are taking aspartame in ludicrously small quantities to the point where it is nowhere, it, it, it's on an astronomically slower sc smaller scale. And besides that, uh, a little bit of methanol is fairly common in a variety of metabolic processes. Um, it's specifically ingesting it where you're taking large quantities of it where it becomes a problem. So, okay. You might be thinking, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting, right? But like, where, do, where does ethanol factor into all of this? So, as I said, the ultimate metabolite of ethanol is acetic acid, which you may know as, as the primary component of vinegar, which already probably sounds less toxic, right, than formaldehyde or formic acid. But as far as I can tell, acetic acid does similar stuff to formic acid. It does also cause an interruption in your cellular respiration. It's just a whole lot worse at it. And I think the primary reason for that is because it's a bigger molecule. This added extra methyl group here makes it a whole lot harder for it to fit into those binding sites and actually interrupt the process. So it's capable of it, but it's not nearly as good. Similarly, by being a bigger molecule, specifically by having more alkyl groups attached to it, it's going to be less polar. For a variety of reasons, it's also worth noting that formic acid is a stronger acid than acetic acid. This is something that I think might contribute to that acidosis issue. Uh, it's not something that I really found directly addressed, or when I did, they ignored the whole other mechanism, so I don't know if that was just someone glossing over things. Reason for that is that this, this added methyl group here is um, what we call electron donating. This is, happens through a variety of processes, hyperconjugation, inductive effects, whatever, blah, blah, blah. What that means is it slightly stabilizes this molecule and increases the energy barrier for this hydrogen being pulled off. And by contrast, it slightly destabilizes this molecule, which incentivizes it to have that hydrogen come back. Formic acid, of course, does not have that and therefore is a stronger acid. Um, it has a pKa of, 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 from memory, I think 3.75, compared to acetic acids, I think 4.75. Which might not sound like much, but trust me, that is a big deal. Now, similarly to methanol, ethanol also gets metabolized into an aldehyde, specifically acetaldehyde. And this is dangerous. This is 
quite dangerous. But as I said before, as far as I can tell, this is just a less dangerous version of formaldehyde. It, it does similar things, but it's just a whole lot worse at it. Again, I think this is largely due to the fact that it's just a bigger molecule. It's gonna interfere with its ability to fit into small spaces. It's also, of course, less polar for the same reason. Something worth noting is that both methanol and ethanol act as central nervous system depressants. In ethanol, that's the reason why it makes you feel drunk, it slows down your brain function, makes y'all happy and, you know, having a good time and everything, um, but they do it differently. Specifically, ethanol, and I don't really know why this is, this is something that was, again, kind of difficult for me to figure out, is really good at binding to your GABA or GABA receptors in your brain, increases the effectiveness of that particular neurotransmitter, and so by binding to those receptors, it slows your brain down somewhat unnaturally, right, and gives you that sort of euphoric effect. Apparently, methanol is not very good at that. So while its uh, metabolites do also depress the central nervous system, they do so in a different way that's, you don't, you don't get quite the same effect from drinking it. Another thing that you might have wondered if you're like me, and you're about to be, if you're like me, not very satisfied by this answer, is you may, you may be wondering why if methanol is really good at interfering with um, the electron transport chain and ethanol is not because it's bigger, why doesn't water interfere with it in the same way, right? Water is more polar than methanol. You would think that because it's also, it's also smaller that it would be better at binding to uh, cytochrome C oxidase. And I looked that up and I could not find a satisfying answer besides it's supposed to be that way. Cytochrome C oxidase, I guess, just evolved in such a manner to not have this problem. I don't know how that works. I thought I would throw that at you because that was something that kind of frustrated me. But okay, hopefully that kind of satisfies your curiosity a little bit on the methanol ethanol discrepancy. But you may then be wondering, okay, what's the deal with isopropanol? Of course, isopropyl alcohol is quite a bit more common than methanol just because it's used in cleaning products um, and you know used as a disinfectant and all that business. And like I said, I'm not gonna deal with like n-propanol or anything here because that, 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 that things get a whole lot more complicated there. But isopropyl alcohol has some very specific effects that are super, super interesting. Um, the first of which you might notice is kind of profound. It can't be oxidized to a carboxylic acid in the way that the other two could. Both of these two compounds are oxidized in two separate processes leading to them forming a carboxylic acid, whereas acetone physically cannot do that because there's just not the extra space for that hydroxyl group, right? There's nowhere for it to get attached. This carboxylic acid group on um, the other two acids is of course very, very important because it allows the molecule to be more stable when it loses this proton, which enables it to be quite a bit more acidic than a ketone can be. But okay, acetone is toxic. As far as I can tell, not a whole lot specifically more toxic than something like acetic acid. In fact, I, I think it may be the other way around. I couldn't really find a very clear answer on that. The reason why isopropanol is so specifically dangerous has to do with the fact that acetone and isopropanol work kind of in tandem to be an incredibly strong central nervous system depressant. A lot of this is stuff that seems to just be hypothesized, but apparently the two of them working together by a mechanism that I don't really understand are just a whole lot stronger on the order of two to three times as strong as ethanol is. Acetone seems to in some manner prolong the effects of isopropyl alcohol, and also this larger molecular weight does in some way inter cause more issues. In a, again, this is something that I, that I definitely understand less, especially less than the whole, you know, methanol, ethanol dichotomy. But what I found especially interesting about it was just the fact that the reason why methanol is more dangerous than ethanol and the reason why isopropanol is more dangerous than ethanol is by largely completely different mechanisms. And I just thought like that was that was something that was really, really cool. So I don't know, I hope that like satisfied some curiosity for you and maybe kind of pushed you in a direction of wanting to find more out about it. If you know more about this than I do or you learn more about it than I do, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I would definitely love to hear what your thoughts are on that because I, I don't know, this is such an interesting and kind of complicated, nuanced, whatever subject. And some of it is still active research, something that I became quite aware of today as I was doing all of this research and just realizing like how much stuff is, you know, thought to be the case or hypothesized or whatever. I also learned that apparently ChatGPT thinks that acetic acid has two carboxylic acid groups. So take from that what you will. But yeah, I hope that you found that interesting. Um, I really like chemistry. I really, really like talking about it. And so, you know, I mean, when I get the chance to, like I'm gonna talk about it on this channel. On my 
old channel, by which I mean the one that I had when I was like 14, I liked to talk about, you know, the element of the month. And oh boy, you know, those, those videos are a little bit embarrassing, but also they're just something that kind of makes me happy. And, you know, talking about this stuff is something that's super, super cool to me. If it's not your thing, we'll be getting back to the politics soon, a, a variety of other things. I hopefully, I, I will probably talk about Invincible at some point, um, because season two is coming out right now. I watched episode two today. And otherwise, I, I, I have some other interesting things in the works. If you got this far in the video, I appreciate you watching this far. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, always appreciate, you know, the liking, the subscribing, all of that business. Comment how grateful you are that Jesus Christ gave us alcohol and I'll see you in the next one.